Eye gazes. Eye blinkers. The eyes are the organic prototype of philosophy. Their enigma is that they are not only can see, but are also able to see themselves seeing. This gives them a prominence among the body's cognitive organs. A good part of philosophical thinking is actually only eye reflex, eye dialectic, seeing oneself see. For this reflecting media, mirrors, water surfaces, metals and other eyes are necessary through which the seeing of seeing becomes visible. The clinical gaze understands itself as looking through a laughable and hollow show. It would like to put society before a natural mirror in which people recognise themselves unveiled and without masks. Diogenes sees through the puffed up idealism and cultural arrogance of the Athenians. What interests him is not masquerades and idealistic poses, justifications and palliations. He rivets his eyes on the naked facts of nature. In a sense, if he possessed theoretical ambition, he could rate as the first critical positivist. The clinical gaze is always directed at what is naked. It wants to acknowledge the raw animal and simple facts above which the lovers of higher things like to place themselves. Indeed, the original Kinnock can take pleasure in what is naked and elementary, because he experiences in them truth as unconcealedness. For him, the usual divisions are invalid. There is neither above nor below, neither dirty nor pure. The gaze is open realistic and generous, and it's not embarrassed to look at what is naked. It does not matter whether it is beautiful or ugly, as long as it is natural. The gaze of the master cynic, by contrast, is unhappily broken, reflectively bent. Mm. With this gaze, the hegemonic powers look at their own strategy, recognising that behind everything that presents itself as law, a large portion of force and arrogance is hidden. Who should take closer notice of that than those who exercise power and arrogance half-heartedly and half-awake? In the melancholy reflection of a master cynic, therefore, there is often a tendency to be cross-eyed. The eyes of marked cynics betray themselves through a touch of cross-eyedness, a slight inward or outward turning of one of the organs. Those who are born cross-eyed and choose the path to science, philosophy or political practice already appear to be somatically predisposed towards a double vision of things, of essence and illusion, of the concealed and the naked. The organ dialectic of their eyes drives them on in this, whereas other thinkers bound by the myth of normality, like to ignore that they too see from two different perspectives, and that nobody has two identical eyes. A part of our thinking structure is located in the eyes, particularly the dialectic of right and left, of the masculine and the feminine, of the straight and the crooked. With intellectuals, an astounding dullness in the eyes is often evident that comes not least at all from the continual violence done to the eyes by having to read things the eyes would not accept if they had their own way. They must serve merely as tools for reading, and it is no wonder when the perspective of such people being used to black lines glides right off from reality. Master cynical knowledge as it collects in intellectual heads, betrays itself through the rigid eye blinkers and a cloudiness and coldness of the gaze. It transfixes things it does not penetrate, and to which it does not really grant existence. 
In such eyes there is an expression that can be compared with the crooked smile. The cynical gaze lets things know that they do not exist as real objects for it, but only as phenomena and information. It looks as them as if they already belong to the past. It takes them in, registers them, and ponders its self-preservation. Of course, it is offended that the things return this gaze. They look back as coldly as, as they are looked at. They cannot become warm before the ice melts in the eyes of those who believe they were called on to valorize, to administer the world, and to ravage it.